Uh, greetings all and welcome back to Globish Gaming Channel. Um, KV2. I've had some pretty eventful games in this thing over the past maybe two or three weeks and I've decided to make a little mini series. I'm going to name it The Chronicles of Derp. Uh, basically, this tank is the king of Derp. And for those of you who don't know what Derp actually is, it's basically when you get a rather large cannon. Uh, like this thing here, uh, the 152mm M10, and you fire exclusively high explosive shells. Basically, I think the term, technical term derp, actually means requires no skill. So, any person that goes derp, 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 and derps the way through the game will do quite well with this gun, and this gun is no exception. Um, KV2, then, just quick in game review of it. It's got 860 hit points, not fantastic. Uh, it's along the same lines as the K1S. It's got slightly more than the K1S. K1S got 810. It's got 860 health. Uh, it's heavy. Uh, it's 53 tons in my setup. I use vents, rammer, and uh, enhanced gun lane drive. I'll show you why in a bit. It's pushed, pushed around by a 600 horsepower engine, so the power to weight ratio is not fantastic. It's only got a 35 mil, uh, kilometer an hour speed limit. Yeah, right. Um, it very rarely gets there on flat ground, but it can motor along, trundle along at 30, 32 regularly, depending on what ground you're running on. Turret traverse, 18 degrees a second. Uh, sorry, hull traverse, 18 degrees a second. Now, it is a KV-1 chassis. Uh, if I just show you the differences in the, this one, there is absolutely no difference uh, between the two chassis. They're slightly different shapes. Um, but the KV-1 has 2 degrees a second quicker turning. Basically, because it's so heavy, uh, it's an extra 5 tons, it makes it slower. Uh, armor, it's negligible. It's the same armor as the KV-1. Uh, 75 at the front and sides, 70 at the rear. Uh, it's actually not too bad at the rear, to be honest. But the turret armor is worse. I and mean, the KV-1's turret armor is 110 mil. And for those of you who know anything about KV-1s, they're an absolute pain in the ass to shoot the turrets. This thing is a big old box of a thing. Uh, I believe these were used as indirect fire weapons. Basically, what they would do is they would lob shells. Uh, like mini artillery pieces, if you like. I mean, the gun elevation, if you look at the, the gun man, it's designed to be able to point the gun quite high. I think they would like build ramps and drive the KV-2 up it and, and aim it into the air. Um, so, armour, not that great. Come on to the gun in a minute. Turret traverse at 16 degrees a second. Uh, if a scout or a light or a medium gets around you, they will make you look stupid. Uh, you combine turret traverse and hull traverse, isn't that fantastic? Uh, view range is garbage. It's the 330 meters, which is rubbish, and the signal range is garbage as well. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This tank is all about this cannon. Now, you do have the option of a couple of other guns. You have options of the 107mm um, Ziz 6. But if you're going to run that gun on the KV-2, go and get yourself a T-150. Um, it's a lot better on the T-150, because the T-150's actually got more armor, and it's better. So... I wouldn't recommend running the 107. If you see somebody grabbing a KV-2 with a 107, um, chastise them suitably. They're doing it wrong. Okay, we'll leave it at that. What you want is this thing. Okay, it fires two and a half rounds a minute, uh, which equates to, with my setup with rammer, vents, and 100% crew, about a 20-second reload time, uh, which is artillery slow. Um, the AP ammo... Both, it gets two lots of AP. It gets your standard credit AP and your premium AP. Not APCR or H, uh, heat or anything like that. It's two standard APs. And the average pen is 110 on the standard stuff and 136 on the premium, which is rubbish. Uh, but it's got 700 alpha damage. You don't want to use the AP. What you want to use is HE. 86 millimeters of penetration and 910 average damage. This thing can one-shot kv one ss if it hits them and penetrates them. This tank can get into Tier 8 matches, and for me, it's one of the only Tier 6 tanks, probably this, the Kelcat, and the kv one ss that can actually pull its weight in a Tier 8 game. If you shoot this thing at a KV-4, you can do damage to it. Uh, kv one ss you'd have issues. But in this thing, it doesn't matter. Hey, high explosive does not have to penetrate the armor in order to do damage. And it does constant damage to modules and all that kind of good stuff. If you hit somebody with this thing, um, you're going to do some form of damage. I very rarely get zero damage hits on them. Um, hitting them, though, can be an issue. Um, it has a 0 0.6 accuracy, which is artillery accuracy. I just check my DW Panther's gun. 
Uh, that's got a dispersion of 100, <laughs> 0 0.7. Um, so it's only 0 0.1 underneath uh, an artillery piece. However, it's also got a 4 second aiming time. Hence why I use an enhanced gun lane drive. It doesn't matter though, because you don't have to aim for weak spots. All you've got to do is hit them. And this is a Russian tank. The bigger the number, the better. Um, that is a joke, by the way. It's Russian. Um, I've made some amazing shots in this thing. Some absolute cracking shots. Some of which will be documented in the videos. Um, all round, do I recommend it's worth it? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> it leads to, on the tech tree, a quite, it used to not lead anywhere, as far as I was concerned, and from my memory of it. But now, you go down the KV-1, you've got a choice. You go KV-1 S, T-150, or KV-2. The KV-2 leads to artillery. Uh, and it didn't used to. You can go horizontally to the T-150, but it, now it leads to artillery, and that's the reason I'm carrying on with it. Also, the reason it's an awesome derp uh, machine as well. But you can go sideways. It, it's kind of a strange place in the tech tree. It doesn't lead on to a heavy tank line. The KV-1S leads on to the IS line, uh, and the T-150 leads on KV-3, KV KV-4, STI, or ST-1, and the IS-4. It doesn't lead anywhere. But it's just one of those tanks that I believe you have to have in order to be a mid-tier player. You've got to have a KV-2. It's just one of those funny tanks. Uh, crew skills. I've gone for repairs on the non-essential. I've gone for snapshot on my gunner to enable him to fire more accurately when he turns the turret. And clutch braking on the driver to try and counteract the garbage uh, hull traverse. And it doesn't really make that much difference. Later on it might do, and I've got two or three skills. Brothers in Arms is definitely a skill I'm going to get. As soon as these guys are 100%, I'm going to convert them all to Brothers in Arms. Um, but you don't want to, you get tracked a lot in this thing because the size of the tracks have gone for repairs. I probably should have gone for the whole crew on repairs, but never mind. So, on to the Chronicles of Dirt then. Uh, here goes. Right then. Monastery, or Abbey as it's known. Uh, but on the replay thing, it's actually named Monastery for some reason. Um, I'm in a platoon. There's myself, Iceman, and Phoenix. Now, Phoenix is famous. Well, he will be because he designed the mod pack. Um... He's in his ARL 44. Now, the only thing I would like to make this platoon better would be to be in a third KV-2. Um, because three KV-2s are just absolutely funny. And we're top tier. And let's say that the matchmaking has been generous. Uh, let's say the least. It's been very, very, very generous. Um, <clears throat> we can basically one-shot nearly anything on the enemy team. So, in our KV-2s. Uh, we've decided to go down the 1-2 line. It's the heavy line. Or I, I deem it the heavy line. It's one of the more advantageous uh, places to go for simple reason you can get shots into the middle, etc., etc. But we're not here for tactics. This is dirt. Time to roll out. Uh, 20.25 second reload. So it takes an age to reload. But when you're in a platoon, all you have to do is one person fires and the other person covers them while they're reloading. Uh, you stagger your fire. We've also got the ARL, so it's got the DPM or damage per minute, the faster firing gun, to cover us. Uh, this M3 Lee. Does the kind thing and stops for me. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, anything to tell you about the channel? Yes, oh, yes, I have a Twitter account. Uh, I've made a Twitter account. Uh, I'm going to start tweeting, whatever the hell that is. Um, I got recommended to me. Basically, you, if you'd like to go and follow me, that'd be cool. And basically, whenever I release a video, it sends out a tweet um, to let you know when the new videos are out. So you can keep up to date with that, which is funky. Didn't realise you can do that. I can also post screenshots and all that kind of stuff. I'm getting hip with the down with the times, all the hip kids. Uh, so I now have a Twitter account. I'll leave the my at whatever hashtag shenanigans below in the description. Um, so you can get in touch and follow me on there. So that'd be amazing if you could do that. And then you can retweet all my stuff, which is really cool if you would like to. And then get people interested in the channel, make the channel grow. That'd be brilliant. Don't ask for anything from you guys. If that's one thing you could do for me, that'd be great. Uh, what else? Um... That's it, really. To be honest, yeah. Plan's going well, channel's going well, I'm enjoying myself. KV1, uh, KV2 does take a while to get anywhere. Uh, but when you do get there, it's kind of cool. So we decided to take the high road here. Iceman's having a look down the road, see what you can see. But when I got 330 meter view range, so anybody with a half decent camouflage value uh, won't be visible. I have a little spot through sniper view. Can't really see anything. Okay, that's cool. Haven't got six cents on this tank, so I don't know if I've been spotted. But if somebody sees one of these things, they tend to start taking pot shots at you. So uh, you use the old-fashioned sixth sense, the old globby sixth sense. Haven't got it, but if you start taking damage, you start getting shot from random places. 
chances are you've actually been spotted. And here we have a BDR uh, taking chunks out of Iceman. Now, look at the aiming size of the aiming circle and look how long it takes. Now, but, uh, Phoenix pushes around there and I didn't really think that was a very good idea. Um, but, you know, he managed to get a shot on the K1S. The K1S is actually stock. He won't have the 122mm bang stick. Uh, but I can't really advance now, and, and Boss is getting peppered by a Boss. I keep calling him Boss. Phoenix is getting peppered by a bird on their team now. Check this out. Like I said, you don't have to actually penetrate them, but that shot misses. That was a snapshot. Um, was it worth aiming? No. Uh, to sit out there for four seconds, even a complete troglodyte with no brain whatsoever could actually fully aim and actually probably hit me there. So it's not a good idea. Now, the ARL's taking a beating, so I'll pull in front of him. Wait for the... Uh, uh, the reload to finish and missed my second shot and I'm bouncing so I've missed the first two rounds not doing very well uh, the damage panel showing that was a ricochet off the BDR thank god I don't want to take any unnecessary damage keeps poking out five seconds to the reload that one was a bounce as well no damage ok I'm just going to wait for this guy to pop out now see if he pops out like I said all you have to do is hit them that was a penetrating hit from a HE shell. <laughs> one shotted the BDR, one shotted tier 5 tanks. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time though, that's a myth, okay? You have to actually penetrate his armour. If I'd splashed him and it hadn't penetrated, it's still done damage though. So, around the corner. What I normally do is wait for like three seconds before the reload's up. You've got a couple of seconds to take aim. That's a one shot in the K1S. One hit, one kill. Now the guys are taking a bit of a beating, a bit, little bit of unnecessary damage. Um, which is unfortunate because we could use it later on. Ooh, nice, good hit. Now that didn't penetrate the KV-1, but it actually did damage. Now this is what we mean by derp. Derp does not require, in the grand scheme of things, that much skill to use. All you have to do is hit them, and that's why they call it derp. Uh, now that KV-1, uh, I've just stopped the replay there, the KV-1 that was in E... Oh, sorry, wrong thing. It was in E1 down here. He's he's basically gone behind us. At least I thought he did. So I asked the Iceman if he'd go back and just cover. And Phoenix has already gone. Leave me alone with this KV-1. I'm not quite reloaded yet. And I get tracked. This is why it's handy to have repair. But I use my repair pack anyway. I basically take my shot and knock him out. So that's three shots fired, three kills. If you want to farm Reaper medals... <laughs> Get this thing in tier 6. Now we realise now that it might be a good idea to go back because the base looks like it's going to fall. But then I sort of make a decision that they've got plenty of people down there. So let's just carry on to the base. There's still a couple of guys active. We're winning 8-5. Um, there's a couple of tank destroyers. In fact, there's quite a few tank destroyers left. So I'm assuming they'll be camping. So we're just going to have a look-see and uh, see what's occurring at the enemy base. Can to speed it up a little bit? Sorry, just got a mouthful of yoghurt there speed up a little bit. Now, what's about to come up now is one of the reasons why I like the KV-2 so much. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to make a series of videos. Um, remember what I said about that 0.6 accuracy? Yeah, wait out on that. Just wait out on that 0.6 accuracy. Yes, that was Iceman. <laughs> one shotting a Hellcat from nearly 600 metres away. I didn't see the actual explosion, uh, but that definitely killed him. <laughs> um, yeah, occasionally you get shots like that, and it just makes it so worthwhile. And here comes Bert. Little old Bert. Unfortunately, that shot missed. And Bert actually does actually spot me here. So I decide to get out of the way, because if that bird's got any sense whatsoever, he could actually kill me quite easily. And then Iceman goes and kills him again from like 300 metres away on the move. Yeah, that Russian accuracy. There's still a Jagdpanzer 4 kicking around, or Jagdpanzer 4, flat panzer kicking around. Marder 2 has been spotted down there, and there's the Jagdpanzer 4. Hello, little Jagdpanzer. 250, 300 metres away. Gotcha! Not a problem for the Russian howitzer. <laughs> These guns are daft. Okay, let's have a look at the post-game stats. And there you have it then. Not a bad game. Uh, for my times two, 2,324 experience, 26,000 credits. You don't really make a lot of credits on this t in this tank. Well, I don't seem to anyway. Um, what you need to take into account when you 
use this vehicle is at the end don't just look at the damage done go and check out what modules you do damage i think i ammo racked that bdr I'm not, if i didn't ammo rack him i detonated something quite you know vital within his tank didn't see his turret pop off it was a 9.0 replay as for the team scores then as it should be three top tier heavies one two three positions on the um on the leaderboard it just <laughs> here's another thing me and Iceman got exactly the same damage to the point, <laughs> which is quite funny. Um, yeah, ammunition costs a little bit. I mean, I only fired nine shots. cost me 7,000 credits, so it can cost you a little bit. Four hits, four penetrations, four kills for a total of 1,182 damage. Received seven hits, pen two, uh, non-pens five. So I did actually bounce quite a few shots there. Um, but the thing is with this thing, when you're shooting this thing at tier 5s, um, you're going to penetrate. And it, well, you may not penetrate every time, but if you do, you're going to do crippling damage to them. Okay, so, not a bad start. That's Chronicles of Dirt Part 1. I will see you all in Part 2. Bye now.